Greetings and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's 2.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and it is Friday. Uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. I so desperately need a break. I really, really do. This week has been extremely stressful, draining, exhausting on every front, and I am done. I'm not. The thing of it is, as soon as I... As soon as I start, as soon as I do something to feel refreshed, I'm like, okay, I got to get back to work. Uh, my wife tries to stop me, um, knowing that when I, once I've had like a day or two to like just decompress, I'm great. But as soon as I dive back in, I just, I, I get super tense and I get this like thing. I told my wife last night, I, I'm like, I, you know, it's like in the movie Alien. I feel like there's something in my chest that just needs to burst out and be done with it. Uh, but it's been a productive week. I've gotten a lot of stuff done. And, uh, you know, I've been, I've been really monitoring uh, the price action of a lot of different stuff lately and watching the ebbs and flows as the market goes up and comes down, where the money leaves, where the money comes. Uh, where it goes, and um, I've been making some pretty big trades. I've been trading uh, some altcoins. Some I've been trading out of some stuff and back into others that I think are going to to, to start performing really well. Um, you know, and I and I'll say here, I I I bought some polka dot. I you know, when I was looking at everything, I'm like. You know, I've been so bullish on Cardano, which I still am, and I still believe is king. I truly do. Um, I have not sold any Cardano that I've bought since 2017. So, and I don't plan on it. But there have been other assets um, that I felt, you know, Stellar Lumens. I, I've been very bullish on Stellar Lumens, and I still am. And here's the thing. I have I have exited positions that I am bullish on long term in favor of things that I am more bullish on short and long term. You know, because there are some projects that just they're getting you know, there's so many things. Here, let me put it this way. I am focusing almost a hundred percent at this point moving forward on decentralized infrastructure platforms. And I've been I've been looking at Masari, uh, Masari.io, and and really trying to get a good gauge on which of these decentralized platforms are are doing well in the market right now, which are likely going to do well maybe next market because there are some that I think are still in 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 they're just not in a position. Here's the thing: it, towards the end of the peak of this market, I think everything's going to pump. I think everything is going to do better. Uh, I just think it's the natural, the natural way of the crypto market. It, it, it still, um, and uh, I, I did accumulate some more Zilliqa. Yes, I did, uh, and Polka Dot. Those are my two main ones. And if I'm like, you know, for looking right now, this chart behind me is um, the BTC dominance. And it's been going back up a little bit, but it, you know, it does that, but it's in a steady decline. <laughs> okay. So looking at it here, it may not rise much more than it is, at, but, but it's, it, I believe we're in a position now where more money is likely going to enter the space. And, and when it does, it'll probably hit um, BTC first and then market dominance will come down as the money goes into the altcoins. And here, here's the thing for a lot of you newcomers out there, uh, you know, when, when new money enters the space, it goes in generally to Bitcoin first. And, you know, because, and, you know, a lot of this onboarding happens at, at like, on like Coinbase and, you know, the regulated fiat on-ramp exchanges. But there's a process to that. And it takes like a week, sometimes two weeks for funds to clear. And a part of that is to stop fraud. Uh, it's to stop, you know, credit card fraud that because what some people would try and do is they get a credit card, they go, they set up an account, they buy some, they buy something. And then once they get it, then they call their credit card company. Oh, this wasn't me. And they do a charge back. And then whatever they bought from whatever resource ends up getting screwed. And so that's 
that's why you have to sit on it for a week or two sometimes when you're, especially if you're a new customer. So that's also why you'll see Bitcoin dominance rise because people are buying it, but then they have to wait a week or two until those funds are readily available that they can then start going into the altcoins that they like. So that's, so that's part of the ebb and flow. Um, I've also noticed that Celsius has started to turn around uh, and, and starting to climb back up. I am super excited about Celsius. I'm excited about I'm excited about the desktop platform. Like when moon? That's what I want to know. Uh, I, I just I love Celsius and it's been killing me because I just won't do anything on a mobile phone. If I can't shut it down, and and like disconnect it completely and not you know i just i don't i don't do it i don't do anything on mobile phones anymore i just don't i, I didn't really before but i have so many devices now and i just yeah i'm like mm, i just won't do anything on a mobile phone so i've been waiting and i've missed out on a lot of opportunity uh but i just you know hindsight's always 2020 and securities has just become my primary thing like a part of what stresses me out all the time is all of the stuff that I have to do in the name of security now. And um, it's draining. I mean, it really is draining. Like, honestly, I just, I just wanna be in a happy place. I, honest to God, I, I wanna like wipe the slate clean. Like by the end of the year, I'm hoping I can just get out of everything and, and like, you know, get my taxes paid have everything free and clear, and then just live. Honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna be around here for the bear market. Uh, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just know I need a break because I have been doing this stuff pretty much every day since 2017. And um, I, I, I need a break. It's extremely stressful. Um, but there is some other good news. <laughs> Growth DeFi, man, is just crushing. I don't even know. I mean, look at this. They had a little dip with the rest of the market and then boom. Oh, I mean, it's like I got into this. Um, this is my this is my personal holdings on growth right now. It's at almost 17 G's. And I'm like, I'm trying to work out like a long term thing with these guys because what's happening has been pretty solid that i've been seeing so far and apparently they've got some big stuff coming and um there's been a lot of like i don't want to say fomo but there's a lot of cool stuff coming and I, i'm trying to work out a deal like i want a long term like a six month relationship with these guys uh because so far I, you know i got in on a whim thinking you know what it started off as a paid promo, but I'll invest a, a big chunk of it just to see what happens. Cause I don't do DeFi, but I'm like, like I said, I talked to the guy, he's like, they're, you know, they're like, uh, I don't know, leader, CEO, I don't know, but he, he's like the, the, the guy in charge. And I know that he's got a group supporting him. And uh, so I'm like, screw it, you know, I, I'd love a taste of some more DeFi action. The first one I went into, I did really, really well. And I got out of that. Uh, and I'm still in this one. I'm still in growth. So we'll just have to wait and see how it all comes about. But if I can lock these guys down into a long-term paid deal, damn it, I'm probably going to do it just so you know. Uh, did Chainlink just get on Grayscale Investments offering list? Now, here's the thing that I'm going to I'm going to go into. There's a re there are a few reasons why I have not gone into Chainlink at all. I mean, I do not own a single bit of Chainlink. And while everybody is like, rah, rah, moon, 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 I'm like, I don't, I don't feel it. I, I'm not into it because I, I've talked to a lot of different developers and different folks and they're like, you know, Chainlink is cool, but it's not, it's not really quite all it's cracked up to be. And when I've been hearing all of this stuff, now I've been hearing a lot of this for quite a while. And, and it's like, I, I, I don't have anything against Chainlink, really. I really don't. <clears throat> but there's just something about it that keeps me away. And then I saw an article that I'm going to share recently, uh, or I saw an article recently that I'm going to share that that, that kind of like hits home with me a little bit. Um, but I saw this, I re I'll read this first. A little good news before like so-so mm, news. Did Chainlink just get on Crayscale Investments offering list? Um, 
someone set up a chain link product under the guise of Grayscale Investments offerings last month. Documents from company directory Bizopedia showed. Neither did Grays Grayscale or Chainlink make any comment, but given the fast rise of Link and its increasing use case in the past year, a Grayscale Chainlink Trust product may not be such a far-fetched idea either. So basically what this whole thing is, is they're speculating on whether or not there's this new kind of disguised pseudo Chainlink product that's gonna be partnered or associated with Grayscale. And I'm thinking, Okay, uh, I think a part of what keeps me at bay with this is this. More than 80% of Chainlink is controlled by 125 wallets. New research from Glassnode indicates the top 1% of Chainlink holders control nearly 81% of the token's supply. According to crypto market data aggregator Glassnode, Chainlink's token distributed distribution is at record levels of centralization with more than 80% of Link not held on exchanges currently residing in the top 1% of Chainlink wallets. Glassnode's research found that 81% of Link not held on crypto exchanges uh, or smart contracts is currently stashed away in 125 wallets with the number of tokens held by Chainlink's whales steadily increasing over the past two years. Now, some of you guys may look at that and be like, cool, so there's just like a handful of people that control the majority and, and as long as they control it, it's not gonna be on the market to be, to be dumped and uh, all that. But listen, I, I'm, I'm kind of from the school of decentralization in the sense that I would much rather a token rise in value because of the number of people holding it um, is well distributed throughout the world and everybody is like, like it's a natural market. This doesn't feel like a natural market to me. And, you know, I guess some could argue what is a natural market in this space right now with all of the craziness, but I'm just kind of like, I, I don't, I don't feel super comfortable because basically what that means is everybody that's going in to link, uh, they're hoping that the whales holding 81% of it don't dump it before you do. And I don't like that because I would be willing to bet that the majority of those that are holding link in this top 1% probably communicate in some way, shape or form and likely kind of know what's happening more than the general public does um when including the tokens held on exchanges and in, and, and in smart contracts that glassnode's data excluded the centralization of chainlink's total distribution appears extreme with etherscan data indicating that 82.7 of link is held by just 100 wallets or less 0.03 percent of link holding addresses However, Glassnode estimates that only 12,500 of these addresses are currently active, suggesting nearly 83% of Link's supply resides in 0.8% of active wallets. Chainlink's whales appear to have accelerated their accumulation since July of 2019, with the share of supply represented by the top 1% of Link holders steadily increasing from 53% to 81%. Um, so is this a question of whales in the know basically buying back what maybe they liquidated at one point, accumulating it cheaper? Uh, is this a matter of there not being enough people uh, holding their their crypto uh, in favor of a brighter future? I, I don't know, but I do know that for me, I'm out. I mean, there are there's so many opportunities in the space. I don't feel like I need to jump on the link bandwagon um, because to be quite honest too, when I think about it on, from a business perspective, nothing's to stop. I mean, the same way we've seen, we've seen some, um, we've seen some FUD players trying to short it and put out a whole bunch of crazy stuff, put out their own in-depth research. I read it. I got a lot of hate for reading it too. I'll probably get hate for basically reading this article, but you know, it is what it is, folks. I call it how I see it. I'm not always right, but I just don't personally feel comfortable. I want stuff 
I think I am growing more and more into the the train of thought that I want to see more um I want to see more decentralization and I want to see the focus on such. I don't want to see a uh, majority of holdings basically being controlled by a small number of people because that to me is dangerous. Um especially from an investment perspective. So it is what it is. U.S. Treasury Secretary nominee Janet Yellen acknowledges potential benefits of crypto. Uh, she looks like a sweet little old lady. I hope she's nice. <laughs> Janet Yellen, who was recently nominated by U.S. President Joe Biden for the post of Treasury Secretary, said that it is important to consider the benefits of cryptocurrencies, according to her written testimony published today. I think it most important we consider the benefits of cryptocurrencies and other digital assets and the potential they have to improve the efficiency of the financial system, she said, replying to a question about potential threats and benefits. Now, here's what I have to say about this. It wasn't too long ago that she seemed to have a major problem with Bitcoins. So I'm kind of curious what changed her stance all so suddenly. Hopefully, somebody sat her down and said, hey, this isn't such a bad thing. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've been reading is probably not very accurate. Here are the actual facts. And she said, oh, okay, well, then we can work with this. I don't know. I like to think that, um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd love to be able to just, I'd love to just assume the best in everyone. But... Obviously, there's always a bigger agenda than what than than what is uh, basically demonstrated to us on a public level. That's for sure. So, how this uh, comes about, I don't know. I hope it's bullish. I truly do because I don't think blockchain is going anywhere. And uh, you know, it's it. I, I think we're in really scary times. I really do. I think this is this is really really scary times for me uh, as an individual, as a, a blockchain supporter. It's very scary. Uh, I hope it works out for everybody, and I don't see really any real reason why it can't. So, I guess we'll see. Um, and I've got this is a paid deal. Um, smart key smart keys they basically paid me uh, I think it was like 8.3 or 8.4 we'll just call it nine it wasn't it wasn't that much but they let's just say they paid nine ethereum and um, I've been talking to these guys for a little while and and I they were brought to me by somebody else that I've been working with and um, they were like, Crow, you know, I know you get a lot of crap. You you might really want to take a look at this. This is a pretty legit uh, company and they're doing some really amazing things. And, you know, they, they're probably, they'd be interested in working with you. And so we've been kind of going around and I've been reading a lot of stuff. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I'm going to feature this, uh, but I do plan on diving into this a little deeper as well and covering it again in the very near future, likely next week, because I want to see... Uh, how the numbers change between now and next week. Because looking at just the price action, right now it's sitting at 36 cents. It's up six and a half percent on the on the daily. Uh, and you can see like everything else, we had a dip down to 34 cents and it's starting to come back up, which is which is a really good thing. And but these guys are doing so much stuff that I need to make this a little smaller oh i was going through that's the white paper i don't want to show that yet uh but this is the website become part of our project smart key is the missing part of the puzzle that connects the world of decentralized finance DeFi, and blockchain with the world of physical assets we are the first working platform that allows you to combine physical values and assets blockchain of things with DeFi projects operating on the Ethereum and Waves blockchain. Now, some pros and cons to this. Uh, again, and this isn't a super deep dive yet. Um, I'm just, they paid for a feature. Excuse me, they paid for a feature. They're getting a feature. Uh, but I am genuinely interested in, in this and learning more. I just have not had a lot of time this week to dive super, super deep. So know that more is coming in the future, folks. Uh, for those of you that are interested in this. Um, but 
the one thing they they're they're working with waves which is interesting to me because when i first got into cryptocurrency one of the first things i discovered was waves and it was a platform that's really easy to create your own token and it had his own like kind of internal marketplace and and things like that but you know what's funny is is that the more waves gets adopted and used the lower the price would go <laughs> it just didn't make any sense and the less people used it the 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 higher the price would go so it was kind of a weird situation with waves and i honestly i haven't even touched or looked at waves and i don't know how long i mean it's definitely been at least two years since i've even given it a thought so i i found it kind of interesting i i really when i first discovered waves i was like this is the coolest thing ever and um you know i, I need to take another look and see how far they've come and and how they've grown i'm pretty sure i even met the ceo of waves in vegas at a blockchain convention so um and and i think we might have cracked a couple jokes about waves and and moved on it was just a funny little thing uh but there's some big stuff so polish city becomes the first to adopt ethereum blockchain for emergency services so poland is using smart key built on ethereum to streamline emergency services uh I found this quite interesting. And I saw another video actually where the CEO of SmartKey is basically opening up boxes of all of these devices that they can use for a variety of different use cases. And they're all, they're all labeled, you know, SmartKey. And I, I thought that was actually pretty cool. I'll probably show that in the future. Poland is reportedly the first city in the world to leverage Ethereum's blockchain to add the provision of emergency services offering yet another tangible use case for dis distributed ledger technology. I'll call it Olson, because I don't know, has completed a successful trial run of SmartKey, a bridging technology that connects blockchain with physical assets to aid in police, fire, and ambulance services. SmartKey will rep reportedly enable rescue teams to perform their jobs more efficiently by connecting a smart contract to tell to no tell to Nika smart devices that are used by local rescue teams this connection enables emergency crews to enter any building in the city without having to track down a key holder or wait for permission gustav merrick brezen the marshal of something <laughs> in which Olsen is located, issued the following statement. Sorry, but there's no way I'm gonna try and read that. The need for our rescue services to perform their duties without obstruction is a delicate one. The use of blockchain and smart key technology seems to be like the perfect solution, giving reassurance to building owners and inhabitants, but also freedom for our emergency services. This is kind of interesting stuff, I mean, Several cryptocurrency projects operate in the IoT niche, the largest being IOTA, or MyOTA, with a market cap of $825 million. At least a dozen others have a market cap of a million dollars or more. So, fully diluted market cap right now is only $369 million. Pretty crazy stuff. Volume's gone down a little bit, but price has risen. So it looks like there are more people uh, basically buying and holding right now. Let me see the markets. Let me take a quick look at their liquidity. So primarily Uniswap. So a million dollars a day in volume on Uniswap right now. That's actually pretty big. So you could probably get in and out pretty easily. So yeah. Um, smart key and chain link to collaborate in government approved blockchain project to power smart cities of the future so and it's a whole other article that goes a little bit deeper in in you know what they're why i'm i'm gonna curious i'm gonna read this i mean we're live we're hanging out it's all good it's friday uh after evaluating different oracle solutions we found chain link to be the most secure reliable and flexible network on the market already widely adopted across numerous verticals, blockchains, and dApps. Chainlink ensures that the smart key ecosystem acts on high quality data feeds with secure and reliable on-chain, off-chain connections. Chainlink features 
of political importance to smart key include the flexibility to connect with any type of off-chain API, allowing developers to trigger smart key functions with virtually any piece of off-chain data, security reviewed Oracle nodes run by leading security and blockchain DevOps teams, decentralized infrastructure, proven mainnet solutions already secure billions of dollars in the value. So, I don't know. I, this sounds like interesting stuff, and it's definitely an interesting use case. And to finally see somebody that's that's kind of bringing a, a couple of different worlds together um, for real world usage is definitely interesting and promising. I want to continue reading through the rest of the white paper and dive in deeper. This week has been crazy. I do plan on going over Smart Key again in the future, and it won't be necessarily paid, maybe a, a connected to what I'm doing here, which again, this has been kind of a paid segment. Um, but it's a paid segment with genuine interest in what they're doing moving forward. And I think you guys can generally tell if I'm doing a paid segment on something I really don't care about and something I do. Um, those of you that watch me a lot, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyway, I do have a genuine, genuine interest in smart key and learning a little bit more Well, learning a lot more about what they have going on and their growth potential. So uh, I will be following up with that in the future. So on that note, um, look guys, it's Friday. It's 3.04 and, uh, you know, uh, there is Link again. Look, Link's all over the place. I, I get it. I'm aware. I mean, and, and I'm not saying that uh, Link is bad in any way. Uh, Icon is already, Icon is, is something else that I think is going to do well. Um, and, you know, but I just don't see, I just see a lot of potential in other places. I see a lot of potential in Polkadot. I see a lot of potential in Zillica. And there are other platforms that I hold. There are other tokens that, I, that I'm that i into. Uh, you know, NEO, I, I can see NEO doing well. I'm really puzzled by Ontology's lack of growth. They have a pretty sizable team if their website is any indication of who's still around. They have a sizable team with a sizable roadmap and a lot of stuff happening, but the price action of Ontology has just not done very well at all, especially against Ethereum. And I just, when I look at altcoin investments i think about um it, it, to me i i need to be i want to beat ethereum you know if if i if a if an altcoin project doesn't have the potential in rising up above and beyond the value of ethereum in the same or or and granted there's going to be periods there are always going to be periods with with ethereum being number two right now there are going to be periods where bitcoin pumps ethereum pumps and then other things do after and um you know, depending on where a lot of these tokens are in the market, it's likely that there are going to be a lot of altcoins that at some point rise up in percentage faster than Ethereum does in the long haul. And some of them are going to rise up significantly faster than Ethereum. But that's what I'm trying to find. It's those diamonds in the rough. It's those opportunities for growth. And sometimes you just have to go where the trends are and where the trends have been, you know, some of this stuff is already up a couple thousand percent over its all time low. And those are the tokens that I feel have the promise because they're not just pump and dump coins. They're coins that are building FOMO. They're building momentum off of use case, adoption, news, and basically doing everything right. Where a lot of tokens out there today just have not been doing um, or holding up what I consider to be their end of the bargain, Aeon. Uh, and others, I'm actually so frustrated because I'm seeing a lot of just stuff, you know, I'll just come out and say it. I was insanely bullish on Aeon for a while. And, um, you know, I, I want to see Aeon do well and achieve big things. But so far, I've just been very, very disappointed. Uh, you know, and I'll probably cover that in detail somewhere in the future as well. Uh, it's just my opinion. But I, I, there's just a lot of projects that, that you know, I spent like, I spent a year and a half at least, maybe even two mining Aeon with my Ethereum mining rig, which I might just sell at this point because I'm not mining anything. I don't want to clog up my my um, my internet. Um, so, you know, if anybody wants to buy a six GPU rig, Ethereum mining rig, I might be willing to sell this one. Uh, I mean, it's great. Uh, I just don't, I just don't use it. I don't, I haven't used it now in probably three months. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But on that note, I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy your weekend. 
and uh thank you for joining me as always i do appreciate it i love it i always i know a lot of you guys think i don't reference chat a lot but i do go through and i read a lot of stuff and i i really go through the comments below and when you're watching this video and you see me if you see me talking about whatsapp or instagram or anything in the comments below it's not me it's a scammer don't click it don't call the number it's just some idiot from somewhere uh and you know it's it's just not easy to just wipe somebody uh from all of the comments you have to go through one by one by one and hide them or delete them and report them and it's a ridiculous system uh but um how do you like that bat i like basic attention token i haven't checked the price on it in a while but i like it and i like the browser so um Till next time, guys, thanks for joining me. Crow your coins, and I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Don't drink and drive.